The internet is full of fictional scary stories and movies alike, but what I find more terrifying than these are the true scary stories that happen to real people like you and me every day. Here are three terrifying true stories. Stuntman and internet daredevil Wu Yuning had made quite a name for himself online, not just in his native country China, but across the world. Wu would post photos and videos of himself hanging by one arm over treacherous drops and dizzying heights. And to add to his mystifying feats, Wu would do pull-ups, push-ups, and all sorts of other things as he teetered along the edge of these buildings. Wu never used any safety equipment, cementing himself as a fearless badass from the start. His popularity went from strength to strength, with millions of views of his rooftoping videos, where he would climb to the top of tall buildings and perform stunts for the camera. Unfortunately, one rooftoping event in 2017 would change his life and the lives of those around him forever. In the blink of an eye, a split decision, Wu was gone. On November 8, 2017, Wu equipped with his camera used for recording and live streaming, headed up to the Haoyan House Center in Changsha, China. This building is 62 stories high, towering over the other impossibly tall buildings around Changsha. This was set to be Wu's biggest stunt ever, and unfortunately, it would be his last. He said goodbye to his loved ones for what would be the last time and headed to the top of the building. He was confident that the stunt would go okay, and after all, he had done this hundreds of times. But this time was different. As he made his way to the top of the 62-story building, around 868 feet in height, he set up his camera, hoping for an action-packed afternoon. Local news outlets across China later reported that Wu was doing this death-defying stunt in order to win a 100,000 yuan prize, which is just short of 16,000 US dollars. It isn't quite clear who was going to be providing the money, as sources can't quite agree. The Sun writes that Wu had struck a deal with an unnamed sponsor for his next video, which had gone viral and would have earned him 100,000 yuan. Other sources simply state that Wu was going to receive the money, but they do not specify the source. Regardless of whoever was supplying the money, it appears that Wu was desperate to win it. According to his girlfriend, he planned on using the money to pay for his wedding as he was going to propose to his girlfriend the day after the stunt. He also wanted to use the money to help his mother cover her medical bills as she had been ill. Wu climbed up to the top of the tower and as he was attempting to do a pull up off the side, he lost his balance. He was unable to pull himself back up to safety for whatever reason and hung there contemplating what to do next. This ordeal was captured on video and after struggling to pull himself up, Wu's hands gave way and he plummeted to the floor below. Wu's body was later discovered and his family were informed of his passing. It didn't take long for the news to hit China's social media and the internet began to mourn his loss. Wu's videos had racked up millions of views and now the video of his final moments was going viral. In the aftermath of his passing, the Chinese streaming company, Hua Jia, was ordered to pay 30,000 yuan, close to 4,000 US dollars, for failing to ensure the safety and security of the streamer. His family told the media that sites like these encouraged young people to take part in risky behaviors in exchange for likes, money, and online popularity. The ethics of these sites, not just in China, but worldwide, have often been called into question, as several events have happened on these sites. You may have heard the urban legend of the leaping lawyer who ran out his windows full pelt to demonstrate how strong they were. Sadly, this story is not just an urban legend, and in 1993, the world learned of the story of 38-year-old Gary Hoy, the real leaping lawyer. 
Gary Hoy worked at the Holden Day Wilson Law Firm in Toronto, Ontario. Gary was a well-respected and successful lawyer at the firm and had paved the way in his career. The Holden Day Wilson office was situated on the 24th floor of the Toronto Dominion Bank Tower. And each day, hundreds of employees and clients would shuffle in and out of the office. July 9, 1993 was one of those days. Employees rose early, got to the office, and began working on whatever case they had lined up next. For Gary, July 9th was an exciting day as they were hosting an event for soon-to-be law graduates. The event was held for prospective lawyers to take a look around and possibly get an apprenticeship or some sort of other work experience. Excited students shuffled into the Toronto Dominion Bank Tower, taking the lift to the 24th floor and nervously approaching the law office of Holden Day Wilson. These youngsters had no idea that they were about to witness a traumatic event, and the events of the day would change the trajectory of their lives forever. During the tour, Gary showed the young people around, but he wanted to add a bit of pizzazz to the tour. So he decided to pull out his favorite party trick. Gary charged towards one of the windows and the tour group let out gasps of shock. Gary had done this party trick plenty of times before and was confident that the thick glass wouldn't shatter and that he would bounce back and live to tell the tale. But July 9th, 1993 was different. Instead of bouncing back on the pane of glass, Gary went through it. It was sent hurtling 24 stories to the pavement and roads below. The tour group and Gary's colleagues watched on in horror. Everything moved in slow motion and they were all powerless to save him. The 24 foot fall was fatal, killing him as soon as he hit the ground. Everyone in the office was both traumatized and heartbroken. Gary was well regarded within the company and no one could have anticipated what would have happened that breezy July afternoon. An investigation into Gary's death was opened and it found that the window pane had come out of the seal as opposed to shattering. In a way, Gary was right that the glass was thick enough to be virtually unbreakable. However, he had never considered that the glass could have popped out of its frame at any time. Just three years later, Holden Day Wilson closed its doors. The people working there just couldn't face having to go to the office where Gary had fallen to his death, and the company went under. Whilst Gary is known for his freak accident, it is important that we remember him for the person he truly was. The average male bison can grow to be 6 feet tall and weigh over 2,000 pounds, and is certainly not an animal you'd want to come face to face with. Unfortunately, for an unnamed 72-year-old woman in California, she found herself in close quarters with a very angry male bison. According to reports, the woman was in the Yellowstone National Park at the Bridge Bay Campground in Northwest Wyoming. The woman was making her way around the park, taking photographs of the natural beauty and the wildlife the park has to offer. Yellowstone National Park is an exceptional popular park, so it wasn't unusual to see tourists walking around snapping pictures. According to the park, visitors are advised to stay at least 25 yards away from animals at all times. Whilst they may appear friendly and cute, they are wild animals and can be very unpredictable, especially if they feel threatened. It appears that the unnamed woman ignored this warning and crept closer and closer to the six foot tall bison, hoping to get some exclusive photographs. According to reports, she didn't just approach the bison once, but on several occasions. Eventually, the bison charged at her, goring her and throwing her around. After she had been thrown around and hit the floor, bystanders rushed to the woman's aid and called for medical attention. She was attended to by Yellowstone Park Rangers who called for an air ambulance as her injuries were noted as being serious. Reports then indicated that the woman was airlifted to the Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center over 185 miles away to receive further treatment. There have been no further updates in this case and her fate is not known. John Griffin, the Senior Director of Wildlife Protection for the Humane Society, 
gave a statement regarding the incident saying, With millions of Americans taking to the outdoors this summer and holiday season, this incident is an important reminder to exercise the greatest of caution when exploring landscapes that wildlife call home. If you're in the national park, do not approach the wildlife. Let them roam free. If an animal charges you, run, take cover, and hope for the best. That is it for this one. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. This will help my channel grow. If you have a future story suggestion or would like to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at creepyunsolvedmedia at gmail.com. Looking for more content? Be sure to visit creepyunsolved.com where you'll find podcast episodes, YouTube videos, and the Creepy Unsolved blog. Until next time, this is Dylan signing off. I look forward to your comments below.